Good evening, everybody. This is uh, Andy Johnson coming back with you from Mojo Town. Uh, we're continuing our, our deluxe reverb build we have going on here. Um, the last video we had our tube side wiring done, um, high voltage connections, and of course I'm waiting on the filament winding, or excuse me, the filament wire. I'll be doing that probably uh, last. I like to do that last so I can get all the other wiring out of the way before we get into that. Um, so if you notice, before I started the, the wiring for the control side and our, our filter cap board that also comes through um, right here, this grommet that's half covered up. Um, what I did was, because of the angle of the faceplate 65 degrees um, on the black face amps, it's very difficult to add the resistors um, to your input jacks. Um, e each pair of input jacks has three resistors. So you have a one meg that wraps around connects the two and then you have the two 68k um, resistors that go in for the inputs so I like to do that on the outside and then put them in as units uh, that's why this is like this no it's you know it wouldn't work like this so <laughs> you don't want to leave it like this but it makes a good template so when I go to take these off I like to use the tape just in case because you know it's been a while since I've burned a faceplate but you never know and it is a pain if you ever burn one of those let me try to get these this pair off here. Let's see if I can. Oh, we're running out of time. Here we go. I'm gonna take this pair of jacks off here so you can see up close what it looks like. And these aren't normally done tight; they're snug, um, just to hold it in place. That's all. So I'm gonna take these out, and they will come off as a unit, just like this. All right. So if you see. Um, on the wiring diagram you have the two 68k resistors um, and if you notice the orientation you'll be looking at it just like this and if you notice the orientation on the wiring diagram um, the orientation on the wiring diagram shows you the three being a G J12 jack it shows you the three uh, solder connections for the actual jack itself um, which you know puts your orientation and where it needs to be okay so Again, um, this one meg resistor wraps around, and what you have to be careful of is um, it, it goes on the outside. Well, it, it can't. I mean, you can put it on the inside. I've seen people do it. There's a couple different ways you can do it. I just like to do mine on the outside to keep everything clear from the barrel for the quarter inch plug. When it goes in, it doesn't hit anything because if it does hit the resistor over a period of time, of course, it will break. Um, but you want to make sure that when you jump your resistor over from the tip, which is on this particular, where are we at here? I'm sorry, I'm looking at this to make sure I got, got the right orientation. That's around the bottom, yes. So this, I'm looking at this jack here. This connection on the inside right here, this soldered to the center connection of the one on the left, this is your tip, this is your switch, and this is your ground. So you can actually, when you get these in, you can actually, I like to use, um, and you can tell the ground again by looking at the, uh, the barrel on the Switchcrafts. Uh, the barrel is actually um, part of, well, the bar barrel is a sleeve, it's machined, it's all one piece. So again, I think I mentioned this in the, uh, in the Deluxe, the Tweed Deluxe video, but as soon as you put the, uh, the jacks onto the chassis, it's automatically grounded so you don't need to run a separate ground to this. But what I like to do, because it is a good ground, um, is to add the cathode for our preamp um, for V1 right here or you can run it of course up here as well I'll probably run it up here because this one's clear um, and you can also run uh, your ground if you like to do a bus bar like I do on the back of the pots you can also ground it up here as well on this side so again you have your ground your switch and your tip on this one and because this is rotated what is that rotate 90 degrees um, we have our tip switch and ground on this side okay and both of them are done identically all right so again you know I like to weld these on the or excuse me I like to solder these on the outside and I'll take this tape off there we go and that eliminates you know having them having accidentally messing up your faceplate and especially if you get a custom faceplate you do not want to mess your faceplates up or you know in that case you know even in class, I like to do this before we even get, uh, of course, some Tweed Deluxes, we don't use faceplates, but I like to, to get this done before we start on the, the actual wiring part. Um, but we have templates for that. 
And if you start assembling a lot of these like we do in the shop, we'll have these pre-made. Um, the tweeds are a little bit different than the blackface. Uh, but we will have, you know, we'll have little pieces of vulcanized fiberboard made up that we, we make jigs and templates so we can pre-make these pretty much. Um, and then they just drop into the regular spacing for a, a blackface. Okay? Now, on the back of this, I don't know if you can see this very well, but on the back of the pots, if you notice, I've already put a little spot of solder in the center of the pot case. Um, the reason I like to do that is because I like to run a bus bar to the actual input jack, and uh, you know, there, there's a lot of, of talk about that if it does anything good or bad, or you know, what it, you know, if it's worth anything. Well, even if it doesn't add to shielding, I think it does. I think so, I think it helps ground the uh, the the signal line on the preamp side of the chassis, which eliminates a lot of the noise, and of course down here in your vibrato channel. Um, I like to have it grounded to the jack. So that way, it keeps all your signal grounds isolated to one part of the board. Um, as well down here um, and I like to run a bus bar across because it facilitates it's really easy you know you can ground your, your cathode excuse me your cathode onto the actual bus bar for this this channel um, and you can actually I'll probably do this one as well and up from our third stage or second and third stage filtering I'll actually ground this down here on this signal which is fine um, you can run this all the way back over but it's not necessary um, again, I don't like to uh, ground our, our main, you know, coming through the chassis here from our filter, our cap board, this ground right here. I like to run this back over, you know, to our, our main ground, which is going to be right here or over here. Um, and I explained that before why, why we do that. That, it just, you know, when you add the bus bar to it, if you don't do any modifications down the road or you need to modify something or pull, you know, your ground off or the board up, it, it's just, it's a lot easier to do that. Um, you can, of course, add a. I've seen people add a, a ground strip to the um, the screw for the cap pan. They'll use a 632 screw um, with a caps nut on the back side of it instead of the self tapping screws for the cap pan. And that, you know, you'll get another ground here. You can do it here as well. Um, and I think I explained this in the last video, but the ground taps for the actual reverb and vibrato units, vibrato unit rather, for the foot switch, like when you jump out your. You click on your foot switch and it, it grounds a signal um, right locally where the actual you know jacks are is a really good spot as you can see I've, I've grounded our 220k resistor here um, and our our reverb driver transformer is also grounded right here for I believe that's a reverb vibrato pedal um, I like to keep those as short as possible so that's why that is so Okay, I'm going to pause for now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put our input jacks in, where they should be. I'm going to run the bus bar, and then I will come back and show you the bus bar, and then I'll continue on the wiring of the rest of this all the way down. So this video will be the actual wiring. Uh, it wouldn't, I guess it would be part two, because part one was you know the, the high voltage side. This will be your signal and control uh, tone stack side um, for the actual amp, this side of part two. Okay, so just hang in there, and I will... Be back shortly. Okay, we are back. I have got our channel one wired up here. I just wanted to show you this. Um, I just want to conclude this video with some of the things I've done here, and I'll move on to the, the vibrato and reverb channel. <coughs> if you notice along the uh, the back of the pots here, I've done a uh, bus wire all the way all the way across the, the two channels there to the. Um, also move the of course the input jacks. To the inside of the chassis. You can see how some of the wiring is, is routed here. Get some of the stuff out of here. Try to keep all the stuff out of your chassis. Um, let me just take this. There we go. Alright, so just try to keep the wiring as clean as possible. Um, and you know, you don't, again, uh, I've said this in videos, you don't want to hide any of the wiring because, you know, serviceability is, is key on these amps. That's one of the one of the reasons people love these things because you can look at it real brief and and make things out you know and see where the actual wiring goes of course the exceptions are the wiring that you know goes through the holes and terminates somewhere else on the board but you know almost every amp does that but with these you know it's not a PCB amp it's a hand wired amp so you can see exactly 99% of the time where the wire is going um, so the first channel is done or the normal channel rather is done I need to go through and straighten out some of my wiring here sorry 
please don't be too critical with my wiring. Um, but again, you can see how I, I did the bus bar across the back of the jacks, which does basically the same thing as the, uh, of course, the originals um, had the brass grounding plate, uh, you know, done for the, the actual pots themselves. And that was less really, a, a lot of people think that was for shielding of the pots, and it actually wasn't. And it was to facilitate the, the ease of, you know, uh, soldering all your your grounds to this that actual plate um, because it you know you had to use a big hundred watt irons on the production line and and scrape off some of the galvanization um, to get a good solid joint so they use those brass grounding plates when they're installing the the uh, pots on there so you could do that very easily and that was that's what that was for um, and the same thing goes with the the, uh, the the bus bar across the back and I think the reason they didn't do that because there were some amps um, some hi-fi amps at that time and I've actually seen some TV sets and and people have assembled you know different Heath kit ham radios and shortwave radios and you know of course you know other electronics that they they had that bus bar wire on the back of the of not necessarily pots but across the uh, you know across, you'll see them across the circuit board but they did take a, a while um, to wire in it takes a, you know, you got to measure your wire, you got to straighten it out, bend it where it needs to be bent, um, solder it in place, make sure all the solders are good. And, uh, you know, that takes time. Of course, Fender, the whole reason they went to the bus, the, the, the shield plate was because it was, you know, it speeded things up for them. So, I mean, it made sense. Um, but nowadays, of course, you, you can still get them. They're, they're vendors on, on eBay. I've seen them done, um, but they are kind of expensive. Uh, and again, they're totally not necessary. So, just something to keep in mind but um i'm going to end this video with this and let's see here what else was there any secrets to this i'm trying to think i don't believe there were any really secrets into getting this done any faster or better um it's just a matter of, of paying attention to, to what you have going on in the amp itself and do one thing one section at a time that way you know you won't get overwhelmed and and start to mess things up when you you know get an hour into the wiring of this you know because your eyes start to do some weird things on you but um but yeah the ab763 um thank you guys for watching please if you have any questions um again email me tech at mojotone.com or a johnson a j o h n s o n at mojotone.com um or give us a call you know our, our service techs or excuse me our, our sales uh engineers there are really good at answering a lot of your questions um so Thank you again, and I hope everybody stays corona-free. Take care.